Good morning, friends and family in Jesus. Uh, welcome again here this morning. I hope so far that you have had a blessed week and uh, that your week has been prosperous and successful. Uh, so this morning, we are going to stay in the book of James and the Lord uh, shared a, a scripture out of James with me that we are going to go through this morning. So it is uh, James chapter 2. So it's, uh, it's a lengthy piece, but if you've got time, sit with me and we'll go through it and this is one of the uh, biggest problems or challenges that a lot of churches face today on earth uh, and I think <clears throat> if you've ever been someone that has uh, ushered at a church's door I think somewhere in your mind uh, you know not uh, it wasn't maybe something that you planned but something in your mind um, convinced you to do what we are going to read in the scripture this morning. So if you've ever been someone that ushered at a, a church's door and someone comes in that, you know, doesn't look like a church goer or doesn't look as if they um, will fit into or belong to a church. I think there's something in our minds and it's the way that we've been conditioned and the way that we've been taught. There's something in our, in our minds that go, whoopsie, you know, maybe this person is lost. Um, what are they doing here? They shouldn't be in a church. They, they don't look like churchgoers. They're not dressed like a churchgoer. So this morning, if you want to follow with me, James chapter 2 is going to address that very issue. And we're going to see what the Lord teaches us um, through that this morning. The Bible says, My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes comes in. Now here, James is describing someone's physical... <coughs> excuse me. James is describing someone's physical appearance. So someone dressed in very expensive clothes and with expensive jewelry and then someone with raggedy clothes and um, maybe hasn't bathed in a while. So this is a physical description of someone but family in Jesus this can also be a spiritual description of someone. There is also very highly respected religious people that walk into churches every single Sunday and then there are people that are really battling and struggling to get to the cross of Jesus. So this, this can be a, a, a spiritual uh, picture as well. Verse 3, if you show special attention to the man wearing the fine clothes and say here's a good seat for you but to the poor man um, you say stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Um, have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Now here, friends and family, James is highlighting a serious social problem that we are faced with every single day. And we're not only faced with it at the church, we are faced with it in our families, we are faced with it when we go and we do groceries or when we go to a sports event or, um, you know, when we're walking on the beach with our family. We are faced with this very, very problem of being judges. So the Bible goes on, verse 5, Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him. Now what James is saying here is to us, somebody that looks poor, to Jesus is somebody that is excessively rich because that person lacks so much in life that he spends more time trying to reach God than a rich man might. Because a rich man has got a fat bank account and, and he's got uh, good, uh, reliable cars. He, he's got multiple homes. 
So he doesn't have to rely on God as much as the poor man does. And again, we can refer to the poor as being physically or spiritually poor. Then the Bible goes on and says, but uh, verse 6, but um, you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who are exploiting you? Are they not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones um, who are blessed, blaspheming the noble name um, of him to whom you belong? Now this also is true, family in Jesus, is that if we as humans lift someone up the whole time, somewhere along the line, pride is going to, to step in. And then that person is going to start expecting it. And not, all, not only expecting it to be lifted up, but expecting other things as well. Expecting to, to control a certain area in the church or in your life. Uh, expect uh, for you to do things for them that you, know, you wouldn't necessarily have to do. So we must be excessively careful um, you know, who we lift up and who we put down because the person the poor person who we are putting down might be the one person that has received the gift from the holy spirit that will release us in something that we are battling in then the word of god goes on verse 8 if you really keep the royal law found in the scriptures love your neighbor as yourself you are doing right but if you show favoritism <clears throat> You sin and are convicted by the law as a lawbreaker. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles just at one point is, is, is uh, guilty of breaking the whole law. Look what James is saying here to us, family in Jesus. I can do everything else according to the word of God correctly. I, I can love the Lord my God, with all my heart and all my mind, all my soul, I, I, can, I can fulfill every other command in the word of God. <clears throat> if I look down on the poor, and again, that's poor physically and spiritually, that means that I've broken all of the other commands. <clears throat> then the word of God goes on, verse 11, For he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder if you do not commit adultery, but you commit murder, you've become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are doing, are those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. How true is that, family in Jesus? It doesn't matter who we are one day, whether we've been serving Christ for 50 years or whether we've been serving Him for five hours before the trumpet sounds. The Bible teaches us that everybody will be judged exactly the same way. Everyone. Um, even the saints, the Bible teaches us, the, the, the apostles and the disciples that walked with Jesus, the same. There's going to be judgment on every single one of us. So, this is something that as a church and as disciples of Jesus Christ, that we must concentrate on with everything inside of us. This is something that we must really look into the future as we are building our beautiful church and reaching out to our beautiful town not to show favoritism anywhere and to look at everybody as being absolutely the same in the kingdom of God. Um, that no, no one is richer than anyone else and no one is poorer than anyone else. That we must look at each other exactly, exactly the same, just like Jesus <clears throat> would look at someone. Jesus looked at Nicodemus um, exactly the same as he looked at Peter. And Peter was a poor fisherman, and Nicodemus was a rich um, Pharisee. 
and he was highly placed in society where Peter was lowly placed in society but Jesus treated them exactly the same because a soul is a soul and when we step into the kingdom of God there's no status there there's no labels there's no positions we are all servants and we are all placed on the same level and that is at the feet of our father in heaven amen amen let us pray father god in the name of your son jesus we thank you lord for this day and for this week we thank you for your word and the truth of your word we thank you for your beauty and the beauty lord that you have um, deposited into us through your holy spirit we thank you that you allow us to display your glory and your splendor every single day and lord jesus we pray that as we continue um, in into this uh, last part of the week into the weekend that you'll continue to guide lead and teach us bless us remind us um, of every word that you spoke and help us lord to meditate on your word day and night and be careful to do what it says so that lord we may be prosperous and successful so that we we may um, partake in that promise that you gave us lord we thank you for that father god lord we pray and we ask all of this in Jesus' name alone. Amen. Here we go. Thank you, family in Jesus. Uh, thank you again this week for, for following me. Um, again, before I end uh, this morning, um, if the, the sound quality on the video is poor, I apologize for that. I'm still trying to, to figure out some technical issues on, on the camera, um, but I'll get there. Uh, so for now, please just bear with me. Um, this isn't about a, a, a show. It's not about a, a Hollywood quality um, a video. This is about spending time together in the Word of God and uh, having the Lord connect us to Him. Amen. So I pray that today you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Until we meet again tomorrow, be blessed in Jesus. Amen.